there she was talking about Kristen Sinema and Joe Manchin, senators from Arizona and West Virginia, uh, two people who would never be considered dinos. Pablo Manriquez, Capitol correspondent for Latino Rebels, and Sarah Norman, former senior advisor for digital on the Kamala Harris 2020 campaign. Thanks so much for being here. Pablo, you keep telling me that progressives have the upper hand in this, but so far they haven't been able to close anything. No, they haven't been able to close anything. I mean, basically, they, they have the upper hand in the negotiation in the, in the sense that it's the progressives that are actually advancing Joe Biden's agenda. It's the moderates that are trying to claw it back. I think ultimately, though, when you see like sort of like representatives like Ilhan Omar, who's only a second term member, uh, sort of starting to like, um, I guess, for lack of a better term, mouth off at party leadership and at her, her moderate colleagues, I think is a consequence of just how of the geritocracy that we have in Congress. There's a huge gulf in age oh, between on, Pablo, these new Pablo, members that are- Pablo, I, I get that you write for a living. Geritocracy is a word I don't know. Very old people run Congress, right? Okay. And newer, younger people are starting to arrive. And the divergence between the values that these two generations have in lawmaking couldn't be more profound in the Democratic Party. That's a great point. Uh, Sarah, you know, Kamala Harris, your old boss, used to be uh, in the United States Senate. She's been awfully silent on this, uh, not going down to meet with Chuck Schumer, not going to whip votes. Why not? I think that this is a Senate issue, as it should be. And look, on the topic of, of Democrats well, Hold on. If it's a, if it's a, hold on, Sarah. If it's a Senate issue, then a former senator who's got friends in the Senate is a Democrat should be down there whipping votes and talking to people on the House, right? And she may be on the side, but I think she's well, other We know she's not down there. We, right would have, we would have seen her if she was down there. So we know I mean, she may be making phone calls, I guess. Phone calls. Yeah, okay. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, she's not going to fly to each senator, but she may very well be whipping votes and she has other big focuses to talk on. But uh, Leland, I want to touch on a couple of things that were said earlier. Yes, of course, there's big disagreements uh, among Democrats. You know, there's disagreements among how to best help, you know, American workers and families. Um, I think that there's always disagreements between both parties. Maybe four years ago, Republicans didn't look quite as divided because they had one big issue, which was tax cuts. And good job, they did it. Now we're in a bigger deficit. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that. I covered it covered extensively the 2017 and 2018 uh, Trump and Republican Congress disagreements. It seems as though they were equally divided, and you had the exact same uh, debates. Uh, Part of this also, though, is sort of what's in these bills is starting to come out. Uh, this is Senator Barrasso talking about what's in the larger of the two bills, the $3.5 trillion one. Take a listen. I think Nancy Pelosi's read it. I think Chuck Schumer's read it. Do you think Joe Biden, who is desperately begging Democrats to pass it, do you think he's read it? $3.5 trillion, as they point out, that's well over... One billion four hundred million dollars per page, Pablo. Uh, did, do Republicans have a point on this that we don't even know what's in this thing? Well, I, I think that uh, the rolling out of a paper <laughs> bill at a press conference is sort of like a standard dog and pony show that both parties use whenever there's a legislation that gets put out there. And then people zero in on the things that are most politically sort of uh, relevant or the hot topics and such, such. I don't think that I don't I don't think that the Barrasso necessarily has a point when it comes to like, oh, a big bill. We definitely don't want to pass it. Big bills. Most bills are big bills. They're big stacks of paper. Most senators and most representatives of Congress do not read them all. So I, I think it. Uh, it is sort of standard practice. If it, but but of course, you know, I guess if you want to say that he does have a point, it is concerning that most of them are voting on things that they haven't read, and in some cases that their staffers haven't even yeah. read because some of these documents are so expansive. Yeah, to quote Nancy Pelosi, we have to pass it so we can figure out what's uh, in it. Uh, <laughs> Sarah, get quickly on this. Uh, if this fails, as Elena seemed to think that there's really a possibility that it does, how loud's the thud when that $3.5 trillion infrastructure bill uh, hits the ground? Well, it depends. It's a really, really loud thud if we don't get the debt ceiling raised. It's yeah. still going to be a very loud thud without the debt ceiling. Um, I think both things will be passed. All right, fair enough. Uh, Chuck Schumer already setting, setting up to blame the minority, the Republicans, if the debt ceiling doesn't get passed. Uh, well, Pablo, Sarah, uh, great conversation. We appreciate it.
Thanks, Thank Lillian. you. All right, President Biden's doubling down on vaccine mandates.